Welcome back, puppies! Barking Dog Studio presents Wagons Part 1, featuring foregrounds 28mm hand drawn water cart, general purpose horse drawn wagon, and horse drawn utility cart. Now, in this first part of the video, what you see me <clears throat> working with here is the stand that came for the extra water barrel for the hand drawn water cart. It could be L, I'm just saying. Uh, when I first began punching the pieces out by hand, I accidentally broke one of the legs for uh, one side of the stand. So you see me using super glue here, trying to rectify my accident, my mistake. All three of these models are actually laser cut MDF, except for the barrels that come with the hand drawn water cart or ale cart. I'm just saying. They are, the barrels are actually plastic and they come in a couple different pieces. You have to glue them together. Now, models have difficulty ratings. I'm not real familiar with the difficulty ratings because I haven't assembled a whole lot of models uh, as an adult. I hope to change that going forward because I really enjoyed putting these together and some uh, ships I put together prior, some boats that are from a different company that are also MDF. And foregrounds have these listed as their own rating, I think, which is 4G difficulty rating. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. The 4G difficulty rating for this model kit is level 3. It is not a toy, it is not meant for those under 14 years. That's straight off the instruction sheet there. You see uh, in front of me in the video, actually. But these were a blast to put together. And for future videos, I will be uh, creating a base out of some MDF that you can just purchase at, like, uh, you know, your local... Uh, uh, do-it-yourself store such as Home Depot or Lowe's <coughs> and I'll be uh, just cutting out a, a base out of some MDF and flocking it and doing all that and painting it up just like I would if it was for a uh, miniature person or monster the only thing I'm undecided on is whether or not I'm going to paint the wagons I haven't really come to a conclusion on that just for the simple fact that the MDF really looks and, and the detail that's cut into the into the wagons looks really good by itself you wouldn't have to prime and paint these you could just let them stand as, as they are now I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down to a base um, the wheels don't turn the the wheels and hubs end up being kind of glued in place now the axle on one of the wagons was made to where it could turn uh, and I'll get into that later when you see me putting that part of that model together I actually just ended up ended up gluing it in place I have some pre-painted plastic 28 millimeter horses that'll get repainted and repurposed. They'll be cut off the bases they're currently on and put on the uh, MDF bases along with these wagons. I just need to develop some kind of harness. I'll probably have to handcraft all that. And all that stuff will be coming up in future videos. But right now, just taking a look at the wagons. I think I'm about to finally get that piece set. And just... Uh, there we go. <coughs> now here you see me using tweezers to punch some of the pieces out of the MDF sheet or the sprue, if you will. And you know, the sheet comes with its own removal tool. I didn't really find it all that useful. I went to using the tweezers because when I initially punched out the stand with my uh, on fingers, that's when it, it broke. Uh, but again, that's my fault. No, no reflection on foregrounds for that. Now, as I mentioned, I have put together some boats in the past. They were from a, a different brand, and what I learned from painting those up is that the MDF really loves to absorb primer. Uh, and I'm sure just to soak up paint too, like a sponge. So if you do decide to paint them, 
if you pick these up and you do cytopane or any other MDF terrain, you're probably going to want to put a couple of coats, a couple of light coats of primer on it. So for this card, I actually relied on super glue. Now the instructions uh, do say they, they recommend PVA glue. You could use any brand of PVA glue, but for the other two wagons, I actually ended up relying on a combination of the super glue and the PVA glue. With the PVA glue, you have a longer working time, which essentially means you know when you put two pieces together, uh, if you need to move them around a little bit, you can before the glue sets up. You know, super glue doesn't really allow for that. Super glue pretty much just sets up right away. Sometimes that's what you want, and sometimes it's not. What you don't see off video there is I actually use some rubbing alcohol and clean up the. Uh, and again, I think I did this off camera. I cleaned up the the plastic barrels just like I, I would miniatures. I have a video for that that's already up on YouTube, so you can check it out. Basically, uh, gave that the same treatment. I gave the barrel the same treatment I would uh, any pewter or plastic miniature. Now, with the MDF terrain, I didn't worry about that. I didn't worry about anything like mold release because you're not going to have that. And uh, it being as porous as it is, it being MDF, it, it's going to soak up the glue pretty good. And there we have the 19th century utility cart. Now, both the utility cart and the uh, horse drawn wagon have the 19th century designation to them but I think from reading their website they actually say that it's good for anything from 16th century through the early 20th century now there you see me I went ahead and punched out the tool and I, I start off trying to use it <clears throat> to get the pieces out At some point here, you'll see I just kind of stop and just start using my fingers again to get get stuff loose, get it punched out of the sprue. There's the bed of the cart. And these wagons were a lot of fun to assemble. I'm looking forward to uh, picking up some others. They have one at their website that I really liked. It's an oxen drawn cart. That'll probably be my next next one pick up and there off to the side of the sprue uh, while I'm punching stuff out we have a minotaur and some mushroom men they were my first commission and they're still kind of a work in progress I think I will end up painting these wagons. I'll probably give them a slightly aged look. Again, they really stand on their own. They look really wonderful. But probably use uh, and that'll that'll be in an upcoming video, along with the making the bases for them. The instructions are actually very easy to follow. The pictures just give you an idea how to lay everything out. Kind of like if you've ever put together Legos. Now they kind of do everything by a picture of the uh, foregrounds models for these wagons is very similar. And there we go. That's my favorite PVA glue. You could use any PVA glue. I just really like that Gorilla brand. And uh, here I have the wood glue. But again, any PVA glue will work. 
and as I mentioned, one of the advantages to using the PVA glue is the longer working time. But it is a little more challenging to apply because even with a lot of your smaller uh, PVA glue bottles, you don't necessarily have a way of applying it, uh, even with the nozzle on the bottle, in the small amounts that you actually need it for this 28 millimeter wagon. So what you'll see me do here is I use the uh, tool that again came as part of the MDF sheet for punching out the other MDF uh, parts of the model and I use it as a kind of applicator and I actually just rub the glue that is a, a tile that I have on there just like a wall tile um, that you'd see in a kitchen or a bathroom and I use it because it's easy to clean up afterwards I can just scrape any dried glue right off of it and reuse the tile but I get that little uh, sprue tool and I dip it in the glue I have there on the tile which also serves as a paint palette from time to time and I rub the glue on the wagon parts and start sticking them together and this makes the glue much more manageable help preserve the look of the MDF in case you don't really feel like painting it what you don't see off camera there is I had paused so I was just going over the instructions trying to figure out and I was looking down at the parts trying to figure out where the best area was to apply the glue so, you know you want to get the maximum adhesion right but you don't want a bunch of glue oozing out all over the place and taking away from the aesthetics also just a side note I, I forgot to mention earlier when I, you saw me messing with that stand for that additional uh, water, bell, water barrel or it could be L I'm just saying um, for that other cart uh, the stand did not want to fit down in the base that was something else I had to wrestle with but for the rest of the, that cart and for these other uh, two wagons I didn't have any trouble getting any of the pieces to fit everything fit like a glove Four Grounds are based out of the UK. I really recommend if you get a chance, swing by their website and check out some of their other products. They offer a lot of really good looking products. <clears throat> they offer some pretty cool looking houses. And they offer some sci fi uh, terrain features as well. My hands are in the way here a little bit I feel of you getting a good look at what's going on some of that can't be helped <clears throat> but in the future I hope to have some kind of overhead camera um, I've got another camera that I'll be picking up it's uh, there's the bed of the wagon right there but uh, yeah I've got, I've got gonna have a camcorder I just need to find a way to mount it overhead to give the best view possible I think that's why I actually I ended up editing out a lot of the footage of the utility cart because a lot of it either my hands were in the way or it was my, they were raised up to where it was done off off camera. 
so I apologize for that but I'm still new to the recording of these tutorials and I appreciate you coming along for the journey and see how that applicator just allows me just to get in there just a little bit with PVA glue because you don't need a whole lot to get the pieces to stick together and hold well and that little tool just allows me to get right in there with it and all the little nicks and crannies where you want it and not get any glue where you don't want it alright now we got a little bit of haste magic going on here little time-lapse footage if you will speeding up assembling the utility cart which is a one horse drawn wagon in this video I don't have any miniatures in it for scale uh, you'll see that definitely in, in other videos but hopefully looking at that grid my cutting mat there that I'm working on those squares are one inch one inch square so that kind of gives you an idea of how it would compare to like a 28 millimeter base you can actually stick a couple of uh, one inch based miniatures in the back of the big wagon in the utility cart uh, because it has like these benches on the side the base of the miniature doesn't actually sit down in the uh, uh, bed the floor of the the bed of the wagon it actually spans across the bench part of the wagon that you see there but you can still stand a miniature up in it to show representation of a adventure riding in it although a wagon like this probably be, be used more to haul uh, crates or bags of loots Here you see me trying to get the axle and the forks for uh, strapping onto the horse or ox. There, I use my finger a little bit to kind of smooth out some of the glue, get rid of some of the excess. And imagine the dogs barking in the background. Probably got picked up by this mic. And there you go. That's why we call it Barking Dog Studio. And there is the cart. You got one more wheel and hub to put on there. And it will be finished. And we'll be on to the next wagon. If you guys would like to see some more videos like this, please let me know. Please let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see a video about those ships that I got from that other company, uh, let me know. I can't remember the name of the company offhand, but it would be real easy for me to find them again online and share with you guys. Just let me know what you're wanting to see. Boom, here we go with the wagon. Now this one had a lot more pieces to it. Again, it had a front axle that actually swiveled back and forth. Now for my purposes, I just went ahead and glued it in place. Now that was something that, if you look up here in the corners, a little off the center of the screen actually, those are the... Um, well, what would you call it? The uh, rings or half rings that the cover part of the covered wagon would go over. One of them was already broke on the sprue when I received the item in the mail. That wasn't broken because of me, but it did help in the decision.
because you have the option it gives you a couple of different uh, top boards to go over the bed and you can put the one that has the, the the rings go on to to make it like a covered wagon or you could just have it as an uncovered wagon and I want the uncovered wagon route rather than mess with trying to deal with that broken piece again you get a good look there at just how well that additional tool that comes on the sprue really works for applying the glue for the model and here I slowed it back down a little bit because I just felt with this part of the tutorial you really get a good look at me applying the glue and getting everything glued together Again, no, no real issues getting everything to fit together. Sometimes it took me a moment, you know, to figure out how best to get stuff positioned. But once it was in position, everything just fell into place like a glove. Fit like a glove. And in this wagon, because it doesn't have those benches on the side, you could actually stick two one-inch based miniatures uh, side by side in the bed portion of it. And it just so happens, depending on the miniature and how it's balanced, you can actually set one where its base is partly on the bench for the rider and the footrest for the rider. So you could actually probably load it up with three miniatures if you needed to. If you're using it for an RPG and wanted to represent your, you know, what miniatures were actually in the wagon. I'm definitely going to have to pick up that ox drawn cart. It's similar to this. It looks a little larger, a little bit longer, maybe. But again, I think they're just a great addition to your game, whether you're playing a skirmish or war game or whether you're playing an RPG. The instructions are all fairly easy to follow. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, if a 14-year-old could do it, you got to be able to figure it out, right? Now this did take me a second to get the uh, sides fitted in there, but again, it's it's not really super challenging. Okay, right there, I'm starting to assemble the bench. The backing board and the bench for the driver. What's really cool about this wagon is it actually comes with a tailgate and you can glue the tailgate down or glue it up. And actually in the instructions it suggests you don't glue it. That way you can change its position as you want to. I ended up just going ahead and gluing it in the down position. there we have the footrest for the driver and 
it's starting to look like a wagon folks now you see me applying the glue because I decided I'm going to go ahead and glue it in place but even with that up to oh there you go I did throw a miniature in it uh, you could fit <clears throat> two one inch base miniatures in there without too much difficulty alright here we go fun times this is the front axle between all three builds building up this front axle was the most complicated and it wasn't really that bad Which looks very realistic also. These are just really well crafted models. I don't really have any serious complaints other than they were a little difficult to getting off the sprue. And this front axle I don't really understand why they would make it where you can pivot it when the wheels don't turn the, the wheels end up getting glued in place when the axles are actually square and so are the uh, peg holes in the center of the, the wagon wheel and the hubs also that get glued on there so there's no way those wheels are going to turn so it was like I don't know I guess so you could position it different like you could have it off to the side if you wanted to but I don't get being able to move it around at will if the wheels don't roll I guess so I just opted to glue mine in place that said I can raise and lower that uh, piece that sticks off the front axle that will be the part that gets tied to the horse I did leave that where it can uh, uh, move up and down. I didn't really glue it in place. And that's what you see me working on right here. Just putting that, that piece together. Now again, I'm, I'm using the PVA glue here, but I did go back and end up later on daubing the ends of those with super glue just to hurry up and get them to set up so I could go ahead and assemble that part onto the rest of the front axle. Oh, there's some of my nose and my beard and my face. Now, for this super glue, I uh, used a more liquid one. I, I typically use this Gorilla Gel that I have, but I happen to have this Loctite super glue, and I used it because it's really thin, and I just wanted it to uh, run down inside there. I didn't want a big glob of glue on the outside of that. I wanted it to get down in there and help hold all that stuff together. So I just used a thinner glue. Gorilla make a thinner super glue also. I just happen to have Loctite brand, I think. That's what I'm using here. And what you don't see what's out of the picture frame, and I apologize for that, is I actually just used some of the sprue to scrape off some of the excess super glue that I ended up with. Give 
the super glue a minute here to start setting up. A few seconds, rather. Most super glue sets up in about 10 seconds. sure when I set it down it doesn't uh, get glued to anything else especially when I start putting stuff together and there we have it assembled to the front axle and per the instructions I'm now gluing the back piece of those uh, ties those dog bones into place. I think that was another section that later on I ended up throwing some super glue on because the PVA glue just wasn't setting up quick enough for what I wanted. Alright, now the fun begins. We start putting the axle onto the wagon. Fresh dab of glue there. I think I'll pull up some old pictures of a wagon later when I go to base them and, and paint them. See what I really want to do with the wagon wheels. So I think on some wagons that outer part of what we would today call a tire, I think they were actually metal. There's the rear axle. It just kind of sets in place there. Go gluing the wheels in place. And then I pause just a moment to double check the instructions because this axle goes together, or the wheels and hubs go together slightly different than what they did on the uh, utility cart. On the <clears throat> utility cart, there was actually a kind of a hub on either side of the wagon wheel but for some reason for this wagon they only had one hub and that was on the, the outside they didn't have the uh, rear or inside hub there we go we got the rear axle and wheels and hubs on we're going to finish up the front axle shame that uh, he's going to be glued to a base because even looking at the undercarriage of that wagon just the detail is really spot on you can kind of see how the front axle fits into that yoke on the bottom of the front of the wagon and that's what allows it to pivot. And 
see up to this point I think I was still undecided on whether I wanted it to be the covered wagon or the uh, uncovered wagon. And I was just kind of double checking the instructions before I went further. Hubs on there, and we're just about finished. Here we go. That's where I finally made up my mind, and I was just showing you there. I'm going with the uncovered version of the wagon. And basically what that will do is that kind of this determines which of the rails that you put on the uh, walls of the bed. Yep, there you go. I decided oh, I'm going to glue this together. I'm just going to go ahead and get the axle to adhere there. I'm going to give it a second to dry, and then I end up uh, just gluing that axle to that yoke so it doesn't pivot. Again, I'm just using a spare piece there with some of the sprue wipe up some excess glue. Test fitting the uh, rails. Fit like a glove, so now we're going to throw down some glue. So I don't have the Oxtron cart yet, but if you guys would like to see a video of me assembling that when I get one, let me know in the comments. There will be more videos coming for these three wagons as I uh, base them and flock them and get everything painted up. I may do just a separate video all in trying to do up the harnesses. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. Bark on, puppies.